200 drawings in this entire system. Completed the whole video, uploaded it to YouTube, it was ready to go. In that video, I was basically telling you guys that I was abandoning the whole system and not gonna run with it. Now on the day that I tested the system for the very first time, I learned a couple of things which I'll share with you guys now. G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So in this week's video, we're gonna be talking about the brand new water change system that I installed on this rack and how the very first test went. So on the day of the test, I was filming video for you guys, showing water flowing into the system, priming the system for the very first time, locking the inline taps, seeing if they were gonna hold a siphon, and then finally draining the tanks back out into the garden. So I was filming all that footage for you guys, and um, I said on the past videos that there are a lot of joints in the system and I'd be very surprised if there weren't any leaks. There's almost over 200 joints in this entire system and for not even one of them to develop a leak would be amazing. And unfortunately, some of the joints developed some leaks. Now they weren't massive leaks, nothing, no water was gushing out at all. Uh, we're talking a couple drips per minute, but from some of the fittings on the sides. Now this is one of the reasons why I designed this system to have the fittings on the sides of the tanks so I can access them in case of leaks. If they were on the back, wouldn't be able to access them, be a lot more difficult to change them out. So I stopped filming that video of me priming the system and testing it, and I decided to film a completely different video. And in that video, I completed the whole video, uploaded it to YouTube, it was ready to go. And uh, in that video, I was basically telling you guys that I was abandoning the whole system and not gonna run with it. And there were a few reasons for that, apart from the leaks. So I kind of made that video in haste, and I've had a couple days now to uh, regroup my thoughts and think about it a bit further and I'm basically not gonna give up on the system because that would just be silly. The amount of uh, time I've spent designing this system, building it, and obviously money spent on the system uh, be a bit of a waste to just abandon it just because of a few leaks, which I can obviously fix up. Now on the day that I tested the system for the very first time, I learned a couple of things which I'll share with you guys now. So I basically filled up the tanks to prime all the lines for the very first time and then tested them to see if the inline taps would hold a siphon, and they did, and then I drained out the tanks to the garden. So that was the three steps that I wanted to see with the system. Now, I thought if the joins were gonna leak, they were gonna leak at the time of filling the system up with water because that's when all the joins are under their maximum pressure. I actually put an inline tap on my uh, return pump, on my water change pump, to even lessen the flow so I wouldn't shock basically the system with water going into it. So I had the valve closed about 50%, approximately 50%. So water was, and it, water was still flowing in pretty fast. I was surprised by that. But then the leaks developed when I was just holding the siphon with the inline taps closed. So I wasn't expecting that at that point because that was the least amount of pressure on the joins, just holding a siphon with the inline taps closed. Uh, leaks started to develop. There were slow leaks, a couple drips per minute, uh, but from multiple joins across the system, which was pretty disappointing at the time. After that, I then decided to drain the tanks and then break the siphons. Now, the reason why I decided to break the siphons was because the tanks would just continue to drip if I didn't break the siphons. Uh, they would continue to drain to the halfway point below where the drain lines are in the tanks. And if I was to leave them for 24 to 48 hours, obviously even with just a couple drips per minute from a couple joins, you'll eventually flood your fish room. And if you've got equipment in those aquariums, such as filters and heaters, they're gonna run dry and get damaged. So I didn't wanna do any of that. So I just decided to continue with the test, even though water was starting to drip on the floor and just drain it all out into the garden until I broke all the siphons. So the other thing I learned from the test was when I was draining tanks out, I had all the inline taps open on all the rows. And then water started to flow out, obviously from the top row first, and but the bottom row started to fill up with water. Now, obviously in hindsight, that was an obvious thing that would happen, but I just didn't consider it. However, with the inline taps being on every single tank, I had contingency in place. I could just close off all the inline taps on the bottom row and middle row, and then let the top row drain out by itself. And because I only have one hose attached to the whole system, I didn't have to go out and change hoses to the top row and then to the middle row and then to the bottom row. The same hose is draining all the different rows and that's the brilliant thing with this system. And the top row drained very, very quickly. I was really impressed with that. Once the top row uh, siphon was broken, I started draining out the middle row. Did the same thing with that. Once, that. once the siphon was broken on the middle row, I then drained out the bottom row. And this is where I learned the next thing with the system. 
Obviously, I knew the bottom row was gonna drain out the slowest, being that close to the ground. However, I didn't expect it to drain out this slow. And with the video that I did upload to YouTube about me saying I was abandoning the whole system, this was the reason why, basically. Because I, at the time, thought that the bottom row just took too long to drain. It took way longer than I had expected. I basically said on that video that I could drain each tank individually with a garden hose in the time it takes to drain all the tanks to the same point um, and quicker actually. Since then I've been able to think why would I be able to drain each tank individually so fast yet it was going so slow I could have drained all the tanks in this, on this side of the, of the fish room by the time all the, all the four tanks on the bottom are drained with the system installed. So why, why would that be? Why would they go so slow with this system um, with just those four tanks draining to the garden when um, I can just do it with a smaller hose quicker? And then I realized why. When I broke the siphon on the top row of tanks, air got into the hose that was going out to the garden. The same thing happened when I drained the middle row of tanks. Air got sucked into that hose, into the garden. So with that air in the hose, water couldn't flow out quick enough for the bottom row. The bottom row didn't have enough force to push that air out. And subsequently, the flow was very slow on the bottom row. And that kind of rhymes. Because I, at the time when I made the video where I said to you guys, I'm abandoning the whole system, I figured there was no point in having these four tanks on the bottom row connected to the system because I could drain them out quicker just with an individual garden hose. So I was reconsidering the whole thing. I was thinking, well, if I can't use those four bottom tanks out of these 12 uh, with this water change system, what's the point of having even eight on the water change system? I may as well just not use the, the system at all. So the leaks combined with how long it took to drain the bottom row of tanks um, made me think this isn't worth it. Over since then I've obviously worked out why the bottom row took so long to drain and it was because there was air in the hose that went to the garden. So now that I've had some time to regather my thoughts and think things through I've decided to persist with this system and make it work. None of the joins are glued, there's no gluing involved in this and I didn't think I would need to glue anything because uh, I've done some tests with this and also my cousin Adam has done some tests with this, uh, small scale tests and it's worked with two, one or two of these uh, drain lines in tanks holding siphons for months. And that's why I've decided to just go all out and build it on this system because we were doing tests with his tanks and they had worked. However, obviously with this system, some of the joins, there's so many joins again, there's over, almost over 200 joins. Uh, you gotta expect some leaks across the whole systems. But now I'm turning to you guys to hopefully be able to help me, point me in the right direction in fixing this system up and uh, stopping those leaks. Now I've looked up some glues and PVC cement similar to PVC cement that could potentially, uh, I could use to cement the irrigation lines together. So I, you know, completely uh, stop all the leaks. That would also give me peace of mind um, that the fish room isn't leaking out slowly. Now I do believe there are some PVC cements that do work with irrigation lines, such as this one here. They claim they work with irrigation lines, but I believe they work with irrigation lines constructed from PVC. These irrigation hoses are low density polyethylene, and I don't know if those solvents will work with this type of, type of plastic. I've also actually considered using a soldering iron to weld all the joins in place, but that would just take far too long. I also could obviously putty up the joins, but I don't want to do that. I think that's too much of a quick fix thing. I'd rather dismantle the entire system and basically PVC cement it all together, glue it all together, so I would have peace of mind that it would work that way. The other thing I tried to do was use those metal hose clamps uh, that you screw onto joins, and even they weren't stopping the leaks. The leaks would still drip out. So I was really surprised that, that I thought the metal hose clamps would remedy the solution, but they didn't. The other option I was thinking about doing was abandoning all the irrigation hoses and replacing them with clear vinyl tubing. However, I believe that can get unsightly as algae can obviously grow within the tubing and then eventually it could potentially clog up the system and it looks unsightly. I want it to be black because that matches the color of the stands, the tanks are all black and it just, I just feel it's easier to hide the black uh, irrigation lines than the clear uh, vinyl tubing that would eventually get algae all the way through it. But I do believe the clear vinyl tubing would probably hold better on the irrigation fittings. So I've considered that as well. The other alternative is to basically 
use PVC instead of the irrigation lines. I've obviously used that on this side of the rack, all these 20 tanks on this side connect to a central sump. It took months to build all the PVC connections on this rack, however it works, there's no leaks in it. So I know that works, so that was another thing that I considered. It's worked for me in the past, why won't it work again on this system? Um, and I considered doing that as well, but I'd love to use the, the irrigation lines purely because they're black in color and there is a lot of wiggle room with them because they're flexible. If you guys have a solution to uh, basically weld them together, uh, glue them together, I would love to hear from you. It has to be obviously aquarium safe. That's the other thing I haven't been sure about with the PVC cements or the glues that I've, I've come across that can potentially glue polyethylene. But um, yeah, if there is anyone out there that can help me with this, I really would appreciate that. The other thing I was considering doing was removing the entire series of this build off YouTube because I want to be completely honest with you guys and I don't want to waste your time. So I don't want you guys to be watching from part one to part five and then uh, just thinking this is going to work when you will obviously with the amount of joins develop some leaks in the system uh, and I don't want to mislead anyone so I'm just being completely honest with you guys there are some successes you have in the fish room and there are some failures and this in my eyes didn't work so I am going to have to alter it and continue to make to continue to work on it to make it work but what do you guys think should I remove the series off YouTube until I get a solution for it uh, because again, I don't want to mislead any of you guys and I'm always completely honest with you on my channel. And that's why I'm sharing everything like this, the ups and downs, the failures and the successes in my fish room with you guys. So I hope you do appreciate me thinking about removing the series off YouTube. So for the time being, I'm going to continue to work on the system. Uh, and when I fix it, I obviously will share that with you guys with what the solution is that I come up with or that you come up with. And I would really appreciate some help with this one. Anyway guys, I think we'll end this one here. I hope you've enjoyed these videos and found them informative even though this one didn't quite work. Uh, if you did, please give me a thumbs up, comment and subscribe. I really would appreciate it. All right guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up now. Thanks heaps for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.